Hi guys, um, it is Dr. Beth from Sleepy Dog Veterinary and I'm here with Nurse Sam and in the in our exam room with us we have Mr. Possum. Possum is a really, really, really handsome uh, Maine Coon cat who is here for his appointment and we were going to use him as a demonstration for how our appointments look for cats here at Sleepy Dog. So, first of all, your question is, why did you name your, your facility Sleepy Dog if you see so many cats and it didn't have the same ring to it if I said Sleepy Pet, so Sleepy Dog it is, but we do see a lot of kitties here. Um, there are days when we see tons and tons of kitties and other days where we see less. Um, it all just kind of depends. Here he comes. Oh, he's under the camera. How sneaky. He's coming up to Sam now. So what we do when we have our cat patients in here is we often do let them wander around. Um, in our exam room, I'm going to keep the camera on Possum because he's so handsome and who can look away. But we have a variety of things that are kind of nice when it comes to enrichment. So we have a little hidey area that they can go to, but we can also access them. We also have several cabinets that are high enough that they can get under, but we can also get them out, which we learned really quickly we would need to do. Um, but there's so, so lots of areas where they can feel comfortable and also be exploring. So most cats, when they come in, they either want to stay in their carrier where they feel nice and safe, or they want to check out every single inch. Um, one of the things that's really fun is that when we have two cats who are companions and live together at home, and they come in and they do it together because that is like, it's just really fun watching the, the feline behavior. Um, so anyways, um, so what's happening right now, so we, Sam and I have been treating together uh, Mr. Possum for, I don't know, years now, years. I guess. <laughs> yeah, um, since we had Sleepy Dog because I used to see him at home. Um, so anyway, so he is, a beautiful guy that gets some Reiki treatment, which is what Nurse Sam is doing right now. And he also gets some acupuncture, chiropractic, and cold laser typically. Um, sometimes we do a variation depending on what he is tolerant of each day. Um, but he is um, pretty tolerant of everything. Um, and he is, um, as you can see, he's He's very cozy in his carrier, which I do like to do our treatments a lot of times in the carrier. He's on our... Um, I was just going to mention that. Yeah, he's on our pulsed electromagnetic field bed, which is under this nice blanket. Um, so he's getting a um, treatment that way as well. And um, just kind of soaking it up. And I'll let Nurse Sam talk about what she's doing with her Reiki treatment. So I would say in general, cats love Reiki. It's super calming for them. It's often a treatment that we really love to start with just to get them in the right comfy, calm zone. And what I'm doing right now is just checking if I can feel where there are uh, spots of energetic inflammation on possum and just give Dr. Beth some feedback before she starts her treatments. Oh, I'm okay. It's also nice to compare what I feel versus what Dr. Beth feels. And Sam, when you have a patient who is more scared, how do you start the treatment? Possum is pretty used to us, so we can kind of dive right in. But yes. if you had a new patient or someone who was a little bit more worried about being touched or handled. So usually if a patient's worried or they want to sit in a certain spot in the room and they're giving me signals that they don't want us to come near them yet, I will often hold my hands like this and kind of beam the Reiki at them. Um, animals are very intuitive and they can pick up on the energy that we're putting out. So if I just kind of sit there and beam it at them, they're still absorbing it. I personally um, prefer hands-on Reiki just because I feel like I can feel more. Um, and help them better, but I'm always happy if a patient is too nervous to just kind of sit there and beam the Reiki at them and have them absorb it that way. I also noticed that we have some patients, including actually my dogs, Andrew and Otto, who will kind of come up to Sam and swipe in for like hands-on and then go away. Cats too, I think that happens as well. Yes. And then they're, they kind of like dial her in and then they'll go away a little bit and then come back. 
And, you know, with the animal's intuition, I feel like sometimes they like to tell me how they want the Reiki, where they want the Reiki. Sometimes it's too intense one day for whatever reason, and I'll kind of just let them walk by. I never want to force um, any type of energy treatment on a pet, so I really let them intuitively tell me. Possum is funny, and as Beth said, we've been seeing him for years, so he knows me, but he will often absorb, 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 and then all of a sudden he says, okay, enough, please leave. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so... And what kind of body language do you look for when it comes to, like, sometimes I know he'll get up and leave, but yeah. other times, like, what do you look for in his little face? I don't know if you can see his little face. He's we can also try and move it closer, too. Right? Let me see if um, I can move it closer. So, with Possum, I would say he definitely starts to wiggle around a little bit and just let me know. As you can see now, he's kind of just sitting calmly. His ears are forward. He's kind of just gazing around the room, taking everything in. Um, but when he starts to get antsy, or basically what I call full of treatment, so he's done, um, he'll start to kind of look back at me. Um, his ears might look more alert, um, and he'll start to move. And sometimes he does physically get up and walk away from me. <laughs> but right now he's absorbing a lot kind of in his thoracic spine, so I'm just going to keep sending some energy there. And I would add that Possum is a really good communicator when it comes to what works for him and what he's comfortable with. We sometimes have to do a little bit more guesswork and investigation work with some other cats and patients. Um, but I would say in general, cats are more communicative about what is comfortable for them and what they might want more of or less of than with than dogs. But of course it varies. Yeah, and some days he'll tell me that, you know, he doesn't want me to work on his, you know, lower back and he just wants me to stay to his thoracic. Um, and that could be anywhere from just a look at me to sometimes he'll give us a nice kiss, which we are not offended by here. Mm -hmm. We actually like kisses because we like them to communicate with us. You can also try it whenever you want. Okay. All right, let me... Uh... All right, so again, because we know um, Possum well, we sometimes will overlap our treatments. There are some patients that will do one treatment, um, just kind of one person in the room, and then um, we'll have the next person come in to do their treatment. But with cats in particular, and certainly with Possum, we're trying to make sure that we don't keep him too long because he's being really patient with us. Um, but we don't want to push our limits and make him stay too long. I would say with some of our dog patients, they enjoy being here for as long as possible. So we'll sometimes have a longer amount of time that we can use for our treatments. Or it takes them so longer rude. to settle, which is also okay. And I know that it's a pain to look in your ears, but it is allergy season. And we have seen so many ear infections, skin infections, and things like that, eye infections or irritations that I'm bothering everyone. So with my exam, I'm doing a combination of a conventional, you can see his back is a little sore, which is one of the things we treat him for. So that 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 is not too surprising. So I'm doing my conventional medicine physical exam which there's nothing that equates to a physical exam to tell us what's going on in the body. So I looked eyes and ears. I'm going to see if it'll let me peek in his mouth a little bit too. And I'm combining it with my Eastern medical exam, which is looking at tongue. Oh, you're the best. Tongue and feeling some pulses, which I'll get to in a second. And Beth also realized that his back was tender because I don't know if that, I think everyone can see it, but just in case you can't, he did do a little bit of a shift of his body and he did give us a little bit of a look back to tell us. Good point. When she palpated his spine, yeah.
can't even feel his his pulses back here, which is like, hey, that's rude. But in our Chinese medicine exam, we feel for the pulses for different qualities of what's going on in the body and the different channels that the acupuncture points are on. With dogs and cats, we, we tend to feel the pulses that are their femoral pulses, which are kind of tucked in underneath. Let's see if I can show it on me because it's hard to see it on him, but kind of on the inside of the thigh. Um, and that's our best place to get a sense there. Cats are hard because they hide things really well, including those pulses. So we have to, we have to um, feel pretty carefully. Sam's just going to move the camera a little bit. I'm going to start doing some adjustments here. There we go. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to write it in the comments section. So most cats really like the sensation of the um, motion palpation, which is what we do when we're feeling to see which segments of the spinal column or the spine need adjusting. So the adjustment itself is a quick impulse that is helpful in terms of breaking up a little bit of adhesions that have formed in the soft tissues between the spinal vertebrae or those spinal segments. And the, that can be certainly very therapeutic. But um, I think one of the things that we help immensely with is just the palpation itself helps to kind of swirl around the fluids in the joint and bring a little bit of stretching to the joints. And that seems to really feel good for cats, dogs, and certainly I can speak to myself as a person, feels really good. So while the adjustments are really helpful, they're not even all of the, all of it. And so right now I'm kind of in his thoracic spine, which Sam had noted in her Reiki exam, was a little bit fired up. And certainly down, you can see he says, hey there, Dr. Beck. We're going to see if we can break up some of that stuff, though. I oh, know. But see, that's a really good communication from a cat, which is like, I'm going to let you do some of this, but I'm not going to let you do it all, and that's exactly where it's a little bit tender. So we'll see if we can do a little bit more. But if he says no, he says no, and we listen. And we have a 100 different things that we can do. So this was also the area that he was reacted to before and he's letting me do it but you can see he's kind of high alert mm -hmm. sammy you can see his face better but but he's letting me do those are some quick adjustments now i'm down to his pelvis i know you probably can't see it on the video but he's so communicative with his ears um which is often what i look at with him like one is subtly going back now as she's pressing yeah, and he says, that was rough, ladies. All right, will you pass me that laser, Miss Sam? Yes. So that was it. Because I know Possum well, I am comfortable um, having a little hiss from him. If he was someone we were just getting to know, Sam and I would be a little bit more, um, I probably wouldn't push my luck quite as much. Um, I also have known Possum, and when I first met him, you had a lot more hissing, right? So now he knows me and he's just telling me what's what. But I'm I'm always going to be careful. So now we're going to do a little bit of cold laser. Usually I, I put cold, uh, cold, I put um, acupuncture needles in first, but we're going to give him a little bit of time since I was kind of bugging him. But now he's getting nice and relaxed again. I was going to say, he did give us the hiss, but now his body language is back to being calm and relaxed. So I would say that he's taking in the laser well. And his ears are pointed forward, mm -hmm. which we like. Mm -hmm. How much of our job do you feel like is reading body language, Sam? Oh, gosh. <laughs> a lot, A right? lot, yeah. I would say Sam and I make about 
a hundred decisions a day based on how what we're going to do based on body language because whether it's treatments related or whether it's should we trim these nails today how should we trim these nails if we're going to get a blood sample which part of the body are we going to go for our goal is always comfort first and trust first so it guides a lot of our decisions and we're lucky because we get to see our patients frequently so that means that we can we have a little bit more background data and just quickly I'll show you some of the cat enrichments we have So right here, we have a little bit of a cat shelf that is also a scratching post. The cat can also sit on top, and then if you peek in here, they actually have a little bit of a hidey hole with a cushion, which is nice. Something Beth was talking about too was underneath this table. They have a little hidey hole if they wanted to stay in here. So they have options. We have a couple of kind of plush boxes that we like to that have a hole that they can crawl through and then we can take the lid off if we want to. Someone, oh it was, um, I know who it was, someone was in my recycling bin for one treatment because she liked kind of having the four walls around her, another cat, and that's fine. Uh, Pinky, who was here this morning, we do his treatment in his carrier, but he has a soft carrier, so it has, it kind of goes up a little bit further, and that's fine. We can work around that as well. And one of our rooms actually has a nice shelf um, to the window, yes. so some cats appreciate that. Yeah, and we have some steps up to that, make it a little easier for the oldies. So the cold laser that we're doing right now is it's usually a pretty comforting treatment so it is using light to reduce inflammation and pain you can hear the beep when i've given enough joules or the energy that the laser uses into each acupuncture point you can either use the laser as a regional treatment um, which is how a physical therapist or rehab um, practitioner would use it or you can use it in acupuncture points which is generally how I use it because I can't really look at the body without seeing those and there's always some good acupuncture points that I can stimulate in that way. Some cats and dogs for that matter but certainly cats that's the only way we're going to do acupuncture because they don't like the sensation of the needles um, and that we just learn over time who likes what and sometimes it changes so it's important for us to be flexible about what the animal's needs are in that moment. And I'm gonna switch and do a little bit of acupuncture, but you can see he's just resting, because he's the best. All right, so, because he has that tenderness in his rear body, um, which he has, by the way, had lots of good work up for, so we, we know mostly what the causes are. Um, and you know our ideal treatments for them um, but I'm gonna prep you could I don't know if you could see his ear go down like ah brother there we go but so I'm gonna focus my treatment more on his front body because his front body does a lot of work to compensate for that his troubles in the rear We also, I'm also going to note that um, the weather that we're having this week in Boston um, is super um, humid, right? And um, it has had a lot of ups and downs with cold and hot and this and that, which is tends to be really hard on bodies, especially bodies that are struggling in one way or another. Man, she keeps finding these spots of mine. <laughs> and so there are days when we'll see patients that are all having a hard time because there's a storm coming. Um, you hear people say things like, there's rain coming because I can feel it in my knees, and that is a real thing. Uh, 
and we try to honor that because sometimes when you know the cause, it can one, make it a little bit easier to tolerate, at least as a human, and it gives us a little bit more patience with our own bodies and a little bit of explanation for those of our pets. So the acupuncture points that I'm choosing for possum are some that are relaxing. I hope everybody can see his gorgeous eyes. They're so beautiful. <laughs> Um, some that promote blood flow, um, because in the um, acupuncture paradigm, that back pain that possum suffers from is stagnating blood, so blood getting stuck there. And um, if you think about what inflammation looks like in the body, it's red and it um, gets puffy, and so you can kind of see where that metaphor grew from. I'm also treating his liver meridian a little bit too, um, and the meridians that affect his bones. Is that, a, is that a wrap for us today? I think so. <laughs> so you can also notice that possum is like, I'll take in this Reiki from Nurse Sam, but I believe that I'm going to make it a little bit harder for you to access my back, Dr. Beth, because I'm done. And that's totally fine. Um, we've done lots of good treatments for him today, and I'm going to say that that's probably good. I'm stimulating his, his bones and his joints, his blood circulation, and also his liver. The liver in Chinese medicine has a lot to do with blood circulation as well, but it can sometimes lead to crankiness if it's off kilter. And believe it or not, we can sometimes see that in cats. So... Um, so I often tend to do that when I'm trying to get blood moving, which is the case for him. He's not a very cranky guy, but sometimes when I have someone who has like a bit of an attitude complaint at home or even just a general stress complaint, I'll try to stimulate their liver because that often helps. Will you tell people what you did just then? Oh, at the end of each um, Reiki session, the theory is that the energy that no longer serves you comes to the surface, and so you just want to make sure you do a nice sweep at the end and a nice flick so that that energy leaves the body. So we call awesome. it sweeping. Perfect. All right. So we're going to let Possum sit with his needles for about 20 minutes, and then we'll take him out and he'll go home. Um, and... Um, we're probably going to weigh him before he goes because he's been on a weight loss program. So we want to report to his mom how well he's doing. Um, but other than that, he is all done. He's kind of closing his eyes. His breath is a little bit heavier, which is typical with acupuncture, just as everything is kind of rerouting itself. There's some heavier breathing. And I think that's it. That's it. As always, if anybody has any questions, just let us know. Um, or any topics that they would like to um, see or hear about. Um, you know, I just thought of a topic that we should do next time, unless someone has a great idea. Um, Sam and I are doing some lectures at one of our upcoming acupuncture conferences about um, veterinary nursing and alternative medicine, so maybe we could do something on all the many things that Sam does um, that support our patients. Um, separate even than Reiki, which is what you're doing here. Yep. <laughs> um, all right. Well, thank you, everybody. I hope everyone has a lovely, um, calm, cool, and collected weekend, and we will see you in a month. Bye. Bye-bye.